Hello and welcome to a tutorial about the lava using terrains. So the first part here, we're going to talk a bit about the terrain setup. So we're going to start building some terrains in Houdini and then in a later stage simulate some lava on top of that. So um, we need to, of course, start with a geometry or a height field. So let's place geometry and then type in height field node. Now, in this case, what I originally did is basically I took the block out from Unreal and from there made certain elements fit better with the block out. So maybe we can also fake a block out uh, on top of this, uh, since we can maybe just place a few blocks boxes to block out roughly where we want to have our elements. We don't necessarily need to change the default settings here, so I'm going to stick to the size and the resolution here for the moment. And maybe we're going to place a box to uh, use as block out. So let's change up the scaling, make it a bit bigger. So we can actually go quite large. So let's say, for example, this is a big pathway shape. like, uh, And then around that, we want some lava. So let's say we want to have a shape like this. Maybe we have some simple border. Like here, we have maybe some borders, like so. And then copy paste this maybe to the other side like this and we can then simply select these boxes merge them together so we have something simple like this and then uh, do a projection so height fields project and like projecting the jump trees now in there it's just something to start with so we want to roughly have the lava here in these areas so that's where we want to have the lava so in case we we have our main scene where we have the pathway here and we have some rocks over there so i'm just going to fake that here a little bit uh, but in case you're working with an actual scene i recommend importing some of the scene block out data things like that and in our case of course you want to blur the data a bit so i'd feel blurring since they are quite harsh in transition so we want to blur these elements in this case maybe a bit more so we don't have that steep angle so it's nice and smooth and it's also apply the first noise, so height field noise. And as you can see, it will quite deform the terrain. And we want to be careful and probably just going to lower the amplitude to like 90 or so. I think that's more than enough. Just something to break up the shape a little bit. So you can see it's a little bit broken. Not a perfect uh, box lines anymore. If you want to make it even more, we can also do a quick distortion. Let's do height field. Um, Distort, and we can put it in over here as well. And we can, for example, increase uh, the sizing. So as you can see, we're breaking up the shape like this. Maybe we lower the roughness a bit. So we can, in our case, break up the block out a bit more. So we have less perfect shapes. So we have roughly something like this to work with on now. And since this is done, I'm going to do a first erode pass. This will make everything a bit more natural. Uh, so this is an actual simulation. We don't necessarily want to do uh, everything here. So let's just enable and see how much is added. So you can see it made some changes to the terrain and maybe disable the visualization just so I can nicely see what actually has been added. Uh, so it did add a lot of details, which is cool. Um, and we can improve on this. So this is only like a quick first pass on the shaping. Now to continue, I probably want to maybe increase the resolution um, a little bit. So resolution and here uh, we can here increase the resolution. You can always see the resolution here by viewing here this numbers. This is like 500 by 500 voxels or you can also say like pixels sort of like there is a certain limitations about how many data we can have. So you can see if we zoom, it's going to get pretty blurry. And this note can help us to get back some resolution. So let's say we double the resolution to two, which then means that we will have a thousand. So we are doubling that voxel amount. Or if, if you can imagine pixel amount, it might be easier to imagine. So we have a lot more resolution now. So you can see it's a bit more smoother now. Now, since it's a bit more resolution, we can maybe add more noises. So let's say if we do another noising pass. Um, we want to, again, make this uh, smaller, let's say 20. So it's not too intense. Uh, maybe lower the size just to see if we can, you can see if we can get some nice cool detail, maybe something like this. 
And another cool thing to play around with would be some of the distortions. So let's enable here this distortion and let's set here the frequency to four. And that should give us some nice shapes as well. So it is subtle, but it just breaks up the shape a bit more, makes it a bit more chunkier. It's up to you how many noise, noises you will do in the end. Uh, but from here, uh, we have our main details. We don't want to have it too, um, too much detail going on. And if you don't like something, you can always, of course, go back to one of our graphs here, or one of our nodes. And what I will do next is uh, do like a slump. And the slump usually requires a masking as well. So let's also add a mask node. So height fields mask by feature. And let's mask all the flat areas. So here invert. And we now have all the flatter parts. Now often I play around with the slider to have a more interesting mask. So maybe let's have something like so. And let's here now see what the slump will do. Uh, to sometimes get a better vision, I do a clear mask. So here we're going to remove the mask to see what's going on. So you can see that it removed some of the detail. And in some cases, it still kept some of the details. So this is quite a nice spot where we can see some of the chunks, the rocky chunks in the terrain. Well, most of it is still flat because we don't want to exaggerate the detail too much uh, because we will have lava in there. So um, we want to make sure it's like a nice balance. So we can see that there is some nice balancing now between that uh, if I remove it here. So we're adding sort of like a dirt layer on top of everything. Like This works quite nice, nicely to blur some like even areas into this so it's not detailed everywhere so we have some nice blending between some detailed areas and some flatter areas and now that we sort of have the base shape we want to also draw lines where we exactly want to have the lava so this is sort of like a curve based system um so we can control that better so we can use the curve nodes so we have curve busier polylines i guess gonna use use the poly one I'm going to go into top view and I'm going to just draw a curve where I would roughly like to have my lava. And here I'm going to draw another one just like so. So because I perfectly want lava to be around those areas and nowhere else. So we have some control in that. And what I will do is I will also now uh, do a resample of the curve because it's quite low poly so we can do like some resampling we can also here set the resampling to subdivision so you can see it's more smoother now uh, i can also maybe change this value we don't need that many points and now i want to create a mask from here to make a mask from a curve there are a few ways to can you can do this so there are some options to do like mask uh, by uh, geometry here and you can for example fill this in and you will see it won't do anything because this is just a simple line. So you, there, you can see that it does catch the, some of the points. So it, there's some areas where it does catch something and we can try to like uh, play around with some of these settings. Um, what I will do is I will actually show you a way how to make your own uh, sort of like volume notes. To do that, we will spawn a volume wrangle. So volume wrangle. So height fields are essentially volumes, 2D volume. And we can just plug in here our data and our curve so here looks like mask by curve for example and there is only a few lines of code that we require from that and if you're very familiar with vex or some coding what we're essentially going to do is just use uh, functions to check nearby positions so here uh, our first integer would be nearby point nearby point equals to my nearest uh, point so this function, you can also see here in your skin, this will find the closest point to a given area. So here we're going to say 1, which will look at the curve. So 1 means the curve input here. So 0 means itself, 1 means the curve data. So look at the curve. And based on the curve, what is now the, the closest point uh, based on the position data? So once we have that, we, we know the point. But now we need to get the actual vector position data. So nearby position equals the point of one and we want to extract the position from the curve so point position and we, we know what it is by this function so we gathered the point number and we are using the point number to extract the position 
So here we are basically, if you you look at the attributes, we're basically trying to extract the position that is currently in the height fields the closest. So we loop over each voxel and we sort of like check what, what is the closest one basically. So if we understand what parts are closer than another one, we can now simply do a float uh, that for example compares the distance. So distance is equal to distance. So there is a function called distance. And the only thing we need to do is compare the position with our closest position to the curve. So end position or nearest position. Once we have that, um, we are very close to the result. So we only need to um, maybe fit the function a little bit. So we're going to say that distance, I'm going to use the fit function uh, to control that better. So our distance uh, goes, for example, from zero to, let's say one, and maybe 10. In a moment, you will see why I will explain it. And from one to zero. Um, so we are basically looking at a range, a, a radius range or a distance range from one uh, from zero to 10, and we are remapping that to one to zero. Because our output needs to be a zero to one range, because we will output a new mask. So we can just type in at mask equals our distance. And if we have done that, we can see that we now have these lines now. And if you want to make this wider, the only thing we need to do is here increase this value. So if I put in 50, you can see that we're now creating a bigger range so you can make a quick uh load here or an integer saying like hey uh, let's say boost or radius maybe radius could be a better word radius and we're going to make a channel reference here called a radius as well like that i'm going to click the icon and now we can control or we still need to link it here so we can link the radius to this value and now we can control it here. So in this case, we want to put it to like, let's say 60. Um, we can probably here uh, edit. We can edit the interface a bit. So it goes from one to let's say 200. So now we can control that easily. So you can see we made our own system to get this radius. So you can make this more complicated um, but it depends on your knowledge on effects. So if you're very familiar with facts, you can make your own systems to like do something specific, like in this case, gather the data from the curve. So we have a very nice, smooth gradient, basically. So otherwise, you can try to do this with other setups, but this is now a very nice, smooth gradient. And what I will first do is I will try to maybe create some additional noise at the borders here, and then we will use this data to then spawn the lava itself. So let's go and actually boost this to a larger value, let's say 110. So we have a really nice big range. And we can also maybe mask away uh, other parts. So let's say mask by feature. And we want to probably press invert and let's say uh, subtract. Or maybe, I guess, what's better, maybe uh, multiply. So we are basically trying to multiply here some areas. So we only get like these specific areas that we want. Uh, like this, yeah, this should be good. And uh, and then from there, let's do some uh, distortion, distortion. And we're going to distort the mask itself. So instead of height, I'm going to type in masking. And as you can see, we now can distort the mask. So we're now creating this way more interesting mask here, as you can see. And we now want to use this to scatter some really cool rock elements or shapes. Um, and from here, we can also use uh, data from Megascans, for example. Here is a example of loading in the height map from a Megascans, and I also apply the distortion to break up the repeating tiles of it. And we basically now want to sort of like blend this bit together, so we're going to use the layer height field layer and we can now blend some elements here together like this so we now are creating sort of like this patch of I guess like lava lava parts around here to make everything a bit more interesting so I used this effect because I thought it was quite interesting to break up the normal dirt or whatever rock landscape with some nice interesting 
live landscape. So the mega scans here are like really useful to add some nice detailing in here. So now we are getting everything ready for our actual simulation. So the only thing left to do is then actually target some simulation around these parts to create to create something really cool and interesting.